Here's an update on my Tactical Intervention Ruger 1022 Tactical Rifle. A few new updates to note in this uh, third edition on this project. To start off, uh, here's a quick overview of the project as it was uh, back in 2010. No muzzle brake, no flashlight, and I'll uh, get a link to that original video for reference on YouTube. It's probably 90% the same, but there are some significant changes that I'll go into here. It's really uh, been great and served the purposes I wanted for plinking and enjoyable shooting for me, my wife, my daughter, and the components I've chosen so far have been really spot on. I almost wish I would have started my daughter with open sights rather than a scope, but it did keep it flexible and got her interested initially, which was uh, one of the most important factors in my plan. In preparation for a Project Appleseed marksmanship course, I needed something with aperture sights and a sling, as those are required. Uh, I've also uh, wanted to add even more flexibility to this platform, at least for utilizing the iron sights, but also for a flashlight and potentially for a red dot sight as well. So here's a side shot for the new updates with the two focus areas being on the fore end of the barrel for a flashlight and using the front sight as well as getting the scope and rings changed around for the stock rear sight. I'll go ahead and link to the second project video for when I added the John Mason muzzle brake on the barrel, but I wanted to ensure I included it here. Uh, still more of a second kind of cool than for any true functionality, it's still a 1022 after all. So the first step was to get a set of Weaver 1022 ray scope rings to lift the scope up and view the stock sights. Maybe 10 bucks and really easy to install, and they don't require the stock rail on the top of the receiver, so I was able to reuse that rail and mount it to the side of this Tapco interfuse stock, drilling holes for the screws and ensuring I cleared the barrel completely. Then I reused one of the Bushnell scope rings to hold a 1 inch flashlight. Uh, this has a cheap little one in there with the rear thumb switch, uh, but nothing fancy yet. Here's a quick close-up on the rail-mounted front stud block and the bipod that utilizes that stud, followed by a quick close-up on the trigger group and my homemade magazine release there. Here are the Tech Sights GI aperture sights for a Ruger 1022. Pause to read the details if you wish. And here I removed the Bushnell Rimfire 22 scope and the rear Weaver 1022 ray scope ring and then uh, placed the rear Tech Sights aperture block on there using the included hardware. Note that the front Weaver ray scope ring is still in place right there. Front sight post requires tapping the original sight out of the dovetail from left to right with a brass punch, uh, all covered with the included instructions. Uh, here we have the new front sight, the number 200 uh, sight post, and the adjustment tool. You have to call tech sights directly in order to get that uh, number 200 post, which is used for shooting at shorter distances. Since I'm doing an apple seed target, the targets are actually physically only 25 yards away. Also note there that I had the uh, bipod removed, and in, uh, in its place a cotton adjustable one inch web sling. So the platform pretty much stayed like this for about six to eight months while I debated on which red dot would best uh, meet my needs and budget. Uh, I went with a Millet Red Dot SP1 compact for the one inch tube in order to fit into the existing ray scope ring and it was light enough to hold with that single ring and gave uh, the right amount of eye relief uh, and also uh, was easy on my budget too. So here's a bit further back from the right side still and then uh, looking down through to see the red dot illuminated. Here's Mini Slim using the red dot, and she likes it as much or more than she did that Bushnell scope, uh, but now I can also get her going with the aperture sights too. Uh, here's a still of the platform from the left side, followed by uh, a speedy final overview from front to back, starting with the John Mason muzzle brake at the front along with the uh, Tech Sights front sight. Rail cover, the mounting uh, stud post block, bipod, vertical grip. Move up to the red dot sight. Tech sights, rear sights uh, coming up here in just a sec. There we go. Move down to the meg release and the trigger group. Back to the single point uh, sling stud, which normally goes uh, further forward up, but I have it back here. That's the mash clip, that's a black box sling, and the adjustable stock. So prepare to pause as needed with all the hardware noted in the credits here. Um, there's uh, quite a bit, it looks like uh, a lot of stuff, like I said, a lot of it hasn't changed uh, since the beginning of the project. So remember to share your support, and thanks for watching.